we've come to see the fall cross-country finals. Here, the fleet-footed athletes of Sketchy U will battle it out against the, hopefully, less fleet-footed runners of that rival school we will never name. The Rainbow Banner makes this the perfect place to talk about chromatography, a technique that separates organic mixtures into rainbow arrays of individually colored components. We'll be covering a handful of different methods of chromatography in this sketch. Based on the method you use, chromatography can be used to identify which components are present in a mixture or to collect pure compounds from a mixture. And off we go. Chromatography works by having compounds interact simultaneously with two different phases. First, there's the mobile phase, which is often a liquid, so we've symbolized it with this wet, soggy running trail. This phase is also known as the eluent. The mobile phase's main job is to carry compounds along whatever chromatography apparatus is being used. Second is the stationary phase, symbolized by these benches for any runners who need to pop a squat, take a load off. You know, be stationary. As you may have guessed, the stationary phase doesn't move. It's the solid or liquid that the mobile phase flows past and compounds stop and stick to. Now, let's have the runners mobilize to see how it all works. Different compounds have different physical properties, sort of like how these two teams are wearing distinctly different outfits. A compound's physical properties dictate how much it wants to move along with the mobile phase versus how much it wants to stop and hang out on the stationary phase. Chromatography can separate compounds based on properties like size or boiling point, but you'll probably most often encounter chromatography based on polarity, so we'll focus on that for now. The visitors clearly thought they were going to be running the Iditarod today. Their polar jackets symbolize polar compounds. And just like these overheated athletes are very attracted to cooling down on that bench, polar molecules are highly attracted to the stationary phase, which is made of a polar material. Because of this attraction, polar compounds tend to not travel very far with the non-polar mobile phase, hence how most of these runners didn't make it far before stopping to rest. In contrast, our sleek, sketchy you runners put on proper bibs for the weather. Clearly, a non-polar crew. Non-polar molecules will spend more time in the mobile phase than resting on the stationary phase, so they will come off the column, or finish the race, more quickly than polar compounds. Now, there's one more key to notice here. See how more of the puffy coders are sitting down than racing? The ratio of sitters to runners symbolizes the partition coefficient of a particular compound in a chromatography system. The partition coefficient describes the quantity of compound that will stick to the stationary phase compared to the quantity that will be moving along with the mobile phase at any point in time. And two compounds with different partition coefficients are going to exit the chromatography apparatus at different times. Just like the sketchy U runners are finishing the race way ahead of team why would we ever check the weather before going outside? The exact amount of time it takes for a compound to exit a chromatography apparatus is called its retention time. Retention time is symbolized by the giant clock at the finish line, which lets racers know if they've set a new PR. Or maybe they're just PO'd. Okay, now that we understand how chromatography works, let's look at some of the typical kinds of chromatography you'll encounter. We'll begin with a classic, like this classic Greek column lining the race course. Column chromatography is a purification technique. It's a way to get significant quantities of a compound you want to have while removing all the compounds you don't. A long glass tube is filled with a large quantity of a polar solid stationary phase, which you can remember by the plus and minus signs on this solid marble. Silica or alumina gel is typically used. Next, you place your mixture of compounds at the top of the column, which you can remember by the mixed color graffiti atop the marble column. Then you slowly pour a nonpolar solvent onto the column. As the solvent flows down, the compounds on the top of the column will start to flow with it, just like that cleaning solvent is carrying paint down the column. The flow of eluent out of the bottom of the column is collected in portions, called fractions, which is why each color of that paint solvent drip is collected in its own bucket. 
Nonpolar compounds, represented by the fast green paint, won't stick well to the stationary phase, so they'll flow out of the bottom of the column first. These nonpolar compounds make up the early fractions. More polar compounds, like this slow-flowing red paint, are going to stick better to the stationary phase, but they will come out eventually to make up the later fractions. The next kind of chromatography to know is what I just love talking about. It's TLC, for Tender Loving Chromatography, or Thin Layer Chromatography. Freudian slip. But needless to say, this banner for Residence Life's Event of the Year, TLC Tuesday, symbolizes thin layer chromatography. TLC has a close cousin, paper chromatography, that works pretty much the same way, hence why this banner is made of paper. If you understand TLC, you'll understand paper chromatography. These methods are both used to determine the compounds that make up a mixture. They use tiny samples, so these techniques aren't any good for purifying and collecting a compound. In TLC, a thin plastic or metal plate is coated with a polar solid stationary phase, that same silica or alumina that we saw in column chromatography. The mixture of compounds you want to analyze is dropped onto the plate near its bottom at a place called the starting line. The plate is then dipped into a pool of solvent eluent, sort of like this pool of the spilled cleaning solution. This is the mobile phase. Capillary action pulls the solvent up the plate, just like the cleaning solution is migrating its way up the banner. The total distance traveled by the solvent is marked at what we call the solvent front. And since each compound in the mixture sticks to the stationary phase in varying degrees, each travels a different distance up the plate. This red polar jacket is here on the ground to remind you that polar compounds won't travel very far up the plate, but nonpolar compounds will. Finally, this handyman from the repair and fix company represents RF, or retention factor, which is the value used to describe how far a compound travels up a TLC plate. It's the ratio of how far a given compound travels up the plate relative to how far the solvent traveled. Hence how the repair and fix man is using a yardstick to measure the distance traveled by those ink blotches and the solvent. More polar compounds will have smaller RF values, and less polar compounds will have larger RF values. Pro tip from the groundskeeper. If you want to get fast and precise results with landscaping your cross-country course, you gotta call high-pressure lawn care. And similarly, if you want fast and precise chromatography results, high-performance liquid chromatography, or HPLC, is the way to go. HPLC is a lot like simple column chromatography, in as much as a solid stationary phase and a liquid mobile phase are used. And like simple column chromatography, HPLC separates and collects compounds by their polarity. HPLC is often called high-pressure liquid chromatography because the mobile phase is forced through a tube containing the solid stationary phase with a lot of pressure. I mean, I thought the name meant they performed well under pressure. I should have read the add more carefully. Anyways, HPLC is often run in reversed phase mode. In this mode, a polar mobile phase, like water, is used, which is why the hydrant has the plus and minus knobs controlling that water stream. Then, a nonpolar stationary phase is used. That means polar compounds will actually elute or be extracted first. Check out what's cooking here. Someone trying to carbo-load during the race? Better late than ever. Well, this gas oven has got me thinking about the only kind of chromatography that uses an oven. Gas chromatography, or GC. Gas chromatography is a way to separate compounds by their boiling points, which means unlike the other methods we've looked at, it doesn't rely on polarity. You can remember that by the liquids in these two pots, which clearly have different boiling points. As with other kinds of chromatography, a mixture of compounds is placed on the stationary phase, in this case, it's a long capillary tube in an oven. And the mobile phase, in this case, a gas, is passed over the stationary phase. Compounds with low boiling points will quickly vaporize and be carried along with the gas mobile phase. Compounds with higher boiling points, however, won't vaporize much until the oven of a gas chromatograph applies some heat. And it's in this way that the GC separates the compounds by their boiling points. And that's it. A quick recap before we stretch, or, you know, find a good bench. 
Chromatography is a general class of techniques that allows compounds to be separated by their physical properties. All chromatography involves a stationary phase and some kind of mobile phase or eluent. How long it takes a compound to exit a chromatography apparatus is called that compound's retention time. The more time in the mobile phase, the shorter the retention time. Column chromatography separates compounds by polarity using a column filled with a polar stationary phase, then having a nonpolar liquid mobile phase drip down the column. Thin layer chromatography and paper chromatography do the exact same thing as column chromatography, but with the mobile phase flowing up a plate instead of down a column. Also, these techniques are only used on tiny samples. Then, HPLC uses a high-pressure mobile phase to separate compounds by polarity, although usually in the reverse phase compared to column chromatography and TLC. That means the mobile phase is polar and the stationary phase isn't. Finally, gas chromatography separates compounds by boiling points using an adjustable temperature oven. And, uh, you know, just looking at all this athleticism is enough to get me pooped and heat stroke. I'm going to go find a couch, a pizza, and a rom-com to rejuvenate until I get roped into watching the next sporting event. See ya.